let's talk about vocals now. You see here I have a vocal for the verse, pre-chorus, and chorus. But I like to separate them by section of the song, so if I have to, I can treat them differently. Also, when I'm putting up my static mix, I don't have to introduce any automation yet because I can balance them right away depending upon their section. So as you can see, they, they all go to this lead vocal aux, which has Oak Sound Soothe, which is an awesome plug-in. It just takes out harsh frequencies. It's great on vocals and acoustic guitars. Pro-Q, sweeping out some low end for thumps, headphone noise, whatever. Phoenix 2 Crane Song Tape Emulator is pretty much a given on every vocal bus. It has a great sound. This dark essence is really, really nice. A Blue 1176, a little de -esser. And then my favorite for some air, Sound Toys, Seaman EQ, has a really silky high end. When we listen to these, you'll notice that the sound changes. And the way that it changes is in the verse, it goes through an ADT tape simulator, which is a nice sort of like an old school double tracker. You pop down and find that guy. So this is nice when you want some kind of a little bit of movement, not necessarily your doubling type of thing. And then in the... Um, in the verses, I also use this small wooden room setting. This gives you the feeling of not being in a, a dead vocal booth, but not really having reverb. It feels like the singer is sort of standing next to you in a small room singing. And then as it opens up into the chorus, I have one of my favorites, uh, Michael Pitchshift. Eventide makes great stuff. I'm friends with those guys. I've done some work for them. I had my old harmonizer, and they fixed it a bunch of times, and they told me we don't have parts anymore. So. I got back into the plug-in. And that has a SPL vitalizer for the stereo expander. So in the chorus, when that comes in, it, it spreads it out. Space Echo, I love the old tape unit. I have it set for a slap, 166, 177, what's that, 86 on this one. They, it varies, it's a couple of settings. And that gives you the feeling of reverb without having reverb sometimes. And a vocal plate. It's the Crystal Dalgy setting from a 480 and there's a lot of pre-delay. So that way, with the pre-delay up and over the 120, what is this, 150, 160, it gives us the space before the reverb starts so the articulation of the lyrics and the vocals comes through. Then my favorite, Sound Toys. This effect rack looks like a lot, but I had four PCM42s that I loved, and they started to go and need repairs, and I was told, once again, parts were not gonna be available. So I spent a bunch of time really sitting and A, being everything to try to get that sound. And what I came up with, and I went back and forth with a couple of friends and Ken at Sound Toys, was a digital delay with this micro pitch shifter and the devil lock. So these guys are for, have them for an eighth note and a quarter. I can change it to any delay I want. And for the background vocals, I have two even tied eclipses, one on micro pitch shift and another on richer chorus, which is great. And I can use both or use some of them. Now on background vocals, when I'm not using the same reverb as the lead, this AMS verb has a really nice, like, tight sound. Let's go up and check out the lead vocals and see how the sound changes from the verse, pre-chorus, and the chorus. And you'll notice when the chorus kicks in, it gets brighter because I added some of this to get it above what was going on. could watch the heavens bleed. Order's coming down, load another round. Boots are on the ground, raise another crown. The world is on fire. So I wanted the pre-chorus to be a little mysterious and have a little warble to it, so I added this great instant flanger, and I put the SPL vitalizer on to give it some width. So let's talk about the chorus. I didn't really want to make it sound like the rock band with one guy singing and another guy doing the third harmony above all the way through. So we have the lead vocal center, and then he doubles and triples himself left and right. Let's listen to that. It's burning. 
burning round me. Greed and desire feels like a million. So you hear the, the depth and the strength of it, but what you also heard were these echo throws. So in every tune and in my mix template, I'm prepared to use a quick method for echo throws. So I like this Chris Lord Algae vocal. Uh, it's not the vocal one, it's the effects one, I'm sorry. And I have it set to a half note, a little bit of room, and this filter thing is nice. And then I put after it another filter to roll off highs and lows. And what I do is I just grab some audio from the lead vocal, I copy it, and then I mute or delete the words I don't want to go through the throw and let the ones I want hit it. And then I can automate the return of the throw any way I like. This looks like a lot of automation, but it was just me riding up and down the fader. So you can check that out again right there. So here's another a little vocal effect trick. So I have these tracks ready, three of them, and I copy the audio and I'll pick specific things I want to put in these telephone delays and put them rhythmically however I want them. Fire, fire. So they'll pan back and forth, if you like. Here they come again. Fire, so that way you have exactly fire. what you want, where you want it and it saves a lot of time for me so if the tracks are there in the template. 